All right, Fury's nice and reliable now. Except the charging system stopped working. What? Hi, I'm Colin. This is Dead Dodge Garage. On this episode, we are going to be working on the Fury again. We're going to be working on this car for the next two months until uh, we drive it to Plymouth. It's alignment day and they're going to check out the front wheels and make sure they're not bent. Alignment's done, front tires are balanced. Hopefully it drives better. They left my singular wiper blade up on the windshield. I just can't live with that. Um, Where's all my power? What? Alright, I wiggled the positive. We're good. Alright, got the alignment, got the front wheels balanced, which made the most difference. It is way better. It's not pulling all over the place. Um, the exhaust pipe that's close to the floor is way too close to the floor. I have not ever had two wipers on this car. This uses the uh, weird early threaded nuts to retain the wiper arms. And the old pivot was just hanging down in the dash because I already started to remove it. The threads are like three quarters gone, so I couldn't actually put a nut on it. So Jamie brought home a couple of bits of wiper linkage here. I'm gonna replace it and have two wipers. Yay! You know, I'm gonna miss the holes in the floor really convenient being able to store your penetrating oil right under the car. This ain't gonna do much, but I'm gonna lube the bushing here. Maybe it'll help it stay squeak free for days to come. Oh my god. They do look good. And we've got a battery hold down now. Look at that. Now you just need to get some heads, make nasty cam. Is it weird that I'm excited to wipe water with two wipers for the first time ever? I'm finally going to fix one of the most annoying things about this car, and that's the throttle pedal. This is one from the car and it only had one stud holding it to the floor and that stud which i just broke off removing it um, the nut was backed off like halfway and was seized on there so instead of being held tight to the floor it could flop around and what it would do this just kind of sits on the actuator part on the firewall and what it would do is just fall off constantly all the time so I'm going to fall it off into the garbage. Now, I was going to use this one from the rotted out Sport Fury I parted out some years ago. I couldn't get one of the nuts off. Uh, and then it started spinning in the rubber. So, you know what? I was going to make one work. But then while looking for parts, I found out brand new ones are only $40. Yeah, there's not a whole lot of floor pan left to bolt that to. But uh, I'm going to make it work. Yeah, yeah. No, it's perfect! Ah! And I can hit the throttle without the pedal falling off now. Yay! Mildly improving some electrical related things here. This was garbage, so there it goes. New terminal, new end on this guy that will actually stay tight. I tighten the ground. It's, it's all good stuff, but I unfortunately noticed there's coolant here on the valve cover. And, uh, well, 
Guess it shouldn't be any surprise that my heater hoses that I zip tied together started leaking. I don't see any problem with that. Now I uh, got an extra body ground I was going to add to the engine too, but um, I don't have time right now, so I'll just put that there. I think that's a good place for that. New pedal works great, but um, you know, some of this action doesn't work great. Headlights stopped working again. Oh, this is nice and accessible too. So I'm gonna fix this before driving home because my headlights were dying. Oh, why is this broken? Lame. It's basically restored. Now in blue, because I immediately broke the red one. Maybe it's even fixed, but while we're here fixing electrical stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and fix this too because it's like barely holding on and I think if I tried hard enough, it just pull right out. Yeah, that looks great. Fire round two. Perfect, doing this right near the fuel filter. Maybe I'll just accidentally set that on fire. It's not even that on fire. Doing way better than normal. Oh look, it's a hot dog. Hi. What? You should be used to being broken down. Why is it? Dude, we're not charging. Wait, yeah we are. Sometimes. I wonder if this new voltage regulator just sucks. It does funky stuff. That's a little high. At least it's good enough we can go get dinner and go home. What's up, baby? How's it going? What do you think? Do you think we'll even make it to Plymouth? Yeah? Do you think we'll make it home? Or are we gonna end up living in a field of corn somewhere? Oh, all right. What? Yeah. The air filter? You just gonna poke it? Do it. Boop. Boop. Nice. I told them not to build this out because I was going to pull that one first, but you know what? They went ahead and built it and sent it down anyway, so I'm going to replace this again, and hopefully this one works half decent. I did take a moment to fix my rattling hood trim. There's a nut here that was loose. The one behind it needed a little more. I can't get on this one without pulling the hood latch, so I'm going to leave that one loose, but no more wobble. Bam! <clears throat> Voltage regulator replaced. I even added a, an extra little ground strap. Maybe that'll help it not suck. Probably not. If I were smart, I'd be fixing the heater hoses right now, but I'm not smart. I'm hungry, so I'm gonna eat lunch instead. This is starting to become a fine automobile. Kinda. What's it say? Dude, these are junk. Started running it and was trying to watch the voltage and see what it's doing and it started smoking and letting out all the bad smells. So, brand new, out of the box, junk. Love it. So I took the cap off the one I just took off to see if I saw anything amiss and there was a burn spot, like a melted spot between the two top contacts and it wouldn't uncontact. So I just knocked that off and we'll see if this one works better than it did. And if it doesn't, I'm gonna get a solid state one from AutoZone because this is just getting stupid. Found where all the smoke was coming from. It smells really badly of electrical fire. It says made in USA, but these things suck. I guess I just don't get a charging system. 
How many voltage regulators is too many? Three voltage regulators later. And it actually charges right. Yay! It's worth noting that the solid state version, which works perfectly right out of the box, was made in China. And this absolute steaming pile of garbage was made in USA. It sure didn't work. This one tried to be on fire too. Yay! I'm just glad it's fixed. I also used a couple self-tapping screws to tap new holes because these ones were getting pretty wallered and the big bolt that I had shoved into that hole um, wasn't going to fit with this because the openings aren't as uh, open. But it charges 14 plus volts and I'm happy with it. We've got a bunch of little stuff to do today. I've got a selection of parts here. First, we're actually gonna hit this with some sandpaper, paint it white, and we'll let it dry while we do the leaf spring bushings and shackles. That could have been worse. Work smarter, not harder. All right. I've got a strip of 120 grit paper here. I'm just going to scuff this up just a little bit. probably really badly to the point where you can see my sanding lines in it after I painted it and I'm gonna regret doing this. I'm not an expert when it comes to sanding and painting. We're definitely gonna see the ghost of the sticky stuff in here. <laughs> That's alright, a battery's gonna go here. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to be white. Some of these grooves are kind of hard to get into, but we're just gonna do our best. We're going to clean up the rust on this. I don't really think we need to sand this piece because it's pretty bare. But I am going to hit all these little spots that have become surface rust with my tiny little wire wheel. Did anyone expect this to be a painting and restoration video? I didn't. These actually turned out pretty good. We're gonna get some white paint on there. I've never used one of these turbo cans and it's way overkill for these little pieces, but I'm gonna do it anyway. See how it goes on this. Great for doing like a fender or a floor. 
Oh my god. Look how much overspray there is. That's not okay. This is awesome. Cover your floor. Whoopsies! These are aggressively white. I'm gonna get started on uh, replacing our shackles with some factory spring hangers. Tighten this pretty good last time I was under here. Can't do it, it doesn't have the poop. All right, this thing, you throw it on here like this. Might need more hands to make it work. You might have seen this fall out, which is why I'm doing this. This is the old leaf spring bushing and it's junk. This was so worn through, the bolt was sitting all the way up in its hole instead of being centered. So hopefully the hole in the frame's okay. That was scary noise. Oh, oh, right. I zip tied the exhaust to the leaf spring to try and pull it down so it doesn't vibrate against the floor like this when you're on the highway. And I have to snip them and redo it. I mean, I could just get another exhaust mount that would properly locate the pipe and hold it so it doesn't vibrate all horribly around, but that would be too easy. This is just a little broken. If I just replace this mount and maybe add another one up there, the exhaust would probably be fine. Right now it just moves too much. Let's see if this does good, good stuff. That was not good stuff. movement is the bolt moving around in what's left of the upper bushing. That's what's left of one of the bushings and the other one, oh here it is. Move to the other side. That's it? Oh, yeah, that's max extension on the shop. Bushings on this side are actually not totally destroyed. Kind of weird. I guess that's pretty easy. We'll just let her melt a little bit and she'll come out. You think I should touch that? Oh, that's hot. Nope. Ugh. That's pretty satisfying noise. Boom. All right, take the nuts off, take off this bracket, and you've got your bushings to install. Now I am gonna lube these up a little bit, and I'm actually gonna use dielectric grease to do so. Just squirt a little on there. Whoa, that was a lot. It's a brand new can. That's more than enough. These are rubber bushings, so they really shouldn't squeak, but you know what? Ugh. Now they definitely won't, and they're really easy to install when they're lubed up. I'll just pop right in there. Thin little coat will do. Doesn't take a lot. Doesn't need a lot. 
Shove a little in the ends for the bolt. Boom. These spring bushings couldn't be easier. The tricky part here uh, is not dropping your greased leaf spring bushing in the dirt. The tricky part here is going to be um, getting the spring up there in just the right spot that we can actually slip the hanger in place. I'm more used to doing a body cars where the rear spring hanger goes on a bracket that just bolts in place and it's pretty easy to just jack it up into place, wedge it, and uh, use the bolt holes to suck it up and into place. I guess this will be a new experience for me. Oh, this is actually going to be, uh, I mean, I don't want to say easy, but this might actually be not hard. These nuts are 11 sixteenths. As with most suspension pieces, you don't want to torque these until you have the weight of the car on them. Um, that's too long. That's too short. <laughs> But you can uh, snug it up and have it ready to tighten. I don't remember what these torque to. I think they have an actual torque spec. I'm going to need to look it up. I'm so happy to have the big long shackles gone. When in doubt, gently hammer your shock back on. I mean, maybe, maybe don't on second thought. I'm letting out all the magic juice. Get the flex tape. I went one hit too far. We're gonna pretend that didn't happen. Tucked that tire is now. Man, I like it. Look at that. This is not what you want in your suspension. Any kind of suspension, but especially on your leaf springs. That's bad. These aren't much better. I'm really happy to have these gone finally. I don't like them. So I'm going to put these right where they belong. Um, according to the internet, the torque spec for these is 35 foot pounds. Uh, feels like 35 foot pounds to me. Click, click. I'm going to move the car over to the lube side and we'll get started on our front end adjustments. My alignment guys adjusted the, the cams all the way one way to try and get the number he thought I wanted, but he said out. So I think he went all the way out. He thought we were going to have to uh, adjust the control arms to get the camber we want. I think we just need to turn them a little back in and we should be able to get that negative one degree, but we'll start messing with it and find out. First things first, take our three quarter and we loosen our rear cam enough that we can move it. I'm going to kind of have to do this by braille. Uh, for one thing, the sun is blinding me, and for two, um, I really can't reach in there very far. Ow. We've done our negative 0.7. It's not going to go all that much further.
That's negative one degree. Let's see what reading this takes when I do caster. One more time, 5.5. So we have to adjust those arms. And we're gonna use these as our example. So down here, this is our ball joint. Our ball joint needs to be further forward without actually moving in. We need to take this heim and move it in and this one and move it out. So if, if this is our ball joint, we just need it like that. That's, exa that's very exaggerated, but. <sighs> all right, all right, all right, okay. This is what we're gonna do. I have a plan. I have a plan. It's not a good plan. Wow, the sunset out there is nice. Shame I'm in here, missing all the good lighting. Can I get my arm out of the danger zone? Thank you. Big shim in the back, little shim in the front. We want to lengthen this one half, two half, three half, four. That is two whole turns out. Let's see where that gets us. Half, we need a better jack. This is not good. One half, two. Okay. Love it. The jack's not loose. It just sucks. Woo! Okay. Shooting for 89.0. The driver's side measured 4.4 degrees of difference, and the way you find the actual caster is by multiplying that by 1.5. You do that, and it comes out to like 6.6, .6, which is still high, and sounds high because he measured it out at 5.8, and I haven't really messed with the other side yet. Um, and this side comes to 4.8, which comes out to 7.2 degrees of caster. I don't think it's actually that high. You can put the level on like that. There's enough of the magnet there to grab the ear there. I've been doing it like this, which I mean works, but if you put it like that, it, it, uh, it's a little faster and easier to read your camber setting. I can't check anything else because, uh, the batteries died. So I'm pretty much done with this anyway. I'm just double checking the toe and then I'm getting out of here. It's dark and kind of foggy out there. Fury front end adjustments, day two. I think we're going to start with replacing the battery tray. That way we don't run out of time. Good news is, I don't think it's gonna take very much to pull this out of here. I think these are all half. Battery tray removal. It's just that easy. <laughs> Nate. Okay. I transferred over the uh, nut onto the upper part of the battery tray support. We're gonna carefully thread this in by hand. 
new battery tray is not perfectly painted. For one thing, I kind of missed an important spot here where I had my hook, and I knew it was going to happen, and then I did it anyway. But it looks way better than the old one did. Way better. So, I'm not really bothered. Boom! New battery tray installed. Now I don't have to worry about my battery falling through my rusted out battery tray, my battery flying into the fan and radiator. I think it's a pretty deluxe upgrade. Yeah, the white doesn't match, but that's okay. It's better than the rusted out piece of garbage that was in there before, and it'll last for a long time. Final temporary floor hump installation. I had it just sitting in here before and it was bare metal and it was getting a little crusty. So I painted it and then I punched some holes in it and we're gonna run some, um, four self tappers through just to hold it down so it'll stop waggling around. And we put some holes in it so we can put on the wrong shift boot, which came out of the Valiant, as did this shifter so that we can actually install the floor hump. We're gonna drop this into place carefully so we don't scratch it even worse than we already have, popping holes in it. Actually, the hole popping wasn't that bad. It was the drilling the holes for the shifter that, that did it. And then I'm gonna choose like four of these holes that actually touch the floor to install it. I'm gonna do this guy first. I'm going to commit one other somewhat heinous crime here. In an A-body, this boot goes on like this. So in this car, we're going to go backward. Someday, I'll get the proper bench seat shifter and the right boot. But uh, a day is not today. Now, for the final touch, the overdrive shift knob. If I can get it to thread. Looks a little goofy upside down, but when you're in overdrive, which is a cruising gear anyway, it looks normal. So, that's right on. Ooh, it looks nice. You like it? Mm -hmm. All right. I like it 100 million percent. Cool. I was going to wait to do this until I did the new floor pan, but you know, I'm already here doing other stuff. Might as well, right? I'm just going to wire wheel these pedals a little bit just to make them a little prettier. I'm going to fog some semi-flat black on them. Then we're going to put the new pads on and just be done with it. Of course, I just finished the floor hump install, so I covered that up so I don't get dust and paint on it. Poor wire wheel has seen better days. Or with some nice thin coats, or just completely overdo it. I mean, they're black, right on. We'll wait for that to dry, do a second coat, 
and then I'll throw the pedal pads on. Boom, right on. We're gonna turn the front in and the back out. There are plenty of other companies that make adjustable control arms. You don't need the Hotchkiss ones, but this bracket really makes a difference in your front end geometry. So I like it. It was worth it to me. I got these from their eBay store. They said there was a, a blemish in the uh, powder coating, which I really like the Hotchkiss color, by the way. I'm all about that. But whatever it was was pretty minor and they look good to me. So whatever. Let's see if we can get this to move a little more now. One, one and a half, two. Oh wait, we're gonna do three, right? So, half, three. In on the front, out on the back. Oh, wow. Half, one, half, two, half, three. Now we're going to roll this back to where it was earlier. I think about there. Hot dog's hanging out today while I work on the car and he decided he wants to help. Two hands. Well, the second one kind of there to brace it. Okay. Then you just drop the nut. A little more. There you go. Pretty much. All right, go ahead. You gotta brace it. Woo. Careful. There you, there you go. Is it pop? Is it? Do you want to roll it? Where? Uh, just off to the side. Right there is good. You don't have to go too far. Just leave it standing up, bud. There you go. Are we going to do that wheel? We're going to adjust the upper control arm. Um, oh, I need my electric ratchet. I forgot that. I will get it. All right. It's on the other side of the car. What the electric? That. All right. So first things first, we've got to remove this nut. So it's a little, it's a little torquey, so I'm going to break it loose. And then if you want to pull the trigger now, it should be ready to come off. Yep, 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 just hold it. It should be about good. So these bolts that we're removing right here are called the cam bolts. Ooh, is that they, washer? You see them? I can see it like a ramen cup. A ramen cup? That's what? the oil filter. Well, it kind of looks like a ramen cup. It kind of does. When you turn the bolt, mm -hmm. it moves the whole arm in the slot. Are you already bored, buddy? No. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, you sure are. Come out, come it all the way. Pull it hard. A little more? A little more? There you go, that should be it. I just need to gently pry it. Take the weight off the bolt. There we go. Oh, we are messing with the alignment. So we need to turn. Because um, when this car got fixed, they were messing, they were doing a bad job. Well, no, These ha this has an adjustable upper control arm. We have to move this ball joint forward. So we're gonna move this joint in one turn. So watch this. Half, one turn, and then we're going to move this one out. Or no, I was going to do two turns. Do you want to turn it in? Rotate it. this way it. in? No, that way's out. So go in. Okay. This way. That's half a turn. Uh, keep going. There. Right about there. Oh, too far, too far. That's two turns. And then we're going to run this jam nut in to kind of snug it so it can't move so easy. And then this side we're going to move out two turns. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're going out. Yep. Okay, that's half. One, keep going, half, two, right about there, that's perfect. It's an H. 
Like Henry. It's, it, it is an H, just like Henry, except this is for Hotchkiss. That's the brand of these control arms. Hotchkiss upper control arms. Okay, so now we put it back in. Hold on. Yeah. Pull it out just a little, because we got to put this shim in. See that? Okay, now put it in. Oops, I'm about to drop that. Okay, go ahead. And it will go all down there. Go ahead and put it in a little further. There you go. Okay, we've got another shim. Go ahead and push it all the way in. Sometimes it helps if you wiggle it. Wiggle the bolt. There you go. There you go. Okay, now we needed this to fit in this slot here, so we turn it until it fits right in. I need it to go in. And it... Oh, sorry. Did that hurt? Did it hurt you? No. Okay, it didn't hurt me. I saw it going this way. We, we need the jack, because this isn't... It's not working right. All right, can you get off me for a second? Yeah, I think I'm out of here. You're out of here? All right, well, thank you for helping, buddy. You can get a thumbs up in there if you want. Like, by the shock, the silver thing. Level down? Perfect. All right. Yeah, look at that. Just a little bit of jacking. All right, well, that was our hot dog assistance moment. We got both control arms adjusted. Gonna throw the wheels on, throw the quick trick on, and see how much more we have to do. All right, uh, this is kind of disappointing. I've got the rear cams in all the way on both sides, and our camber is no longer uh, anywhere near what it was before. We had a, a negative one degree. Maybe I should, maybe I should drive the car back and forth. I bounced the front end up and down, but I don't know if it settled all the way. Boom. Negative 1.4. So we were probably fine where we had it before. And the suspension just hadn't settled all the way. So we're gonna turn this back out. Bring the camber back up to negative one. Negative 1.2. So we're gonna go back out just a smidgen. Negative one degree, right where I want it. Zero it. Oops. Okay. Half, one, half, one. I want to see 4.1, interesting. Okay, so you multiply that by 1.5, and that still puts us at like 6.5. Two, like six degrees, but you know what? I'm fine with that. Let's check the other side. Four degrees, so when you multiply that by 1.5, that puts us at six degrees dead on. That's awesome. It's close enough. We'll center the steering wheel once more, bust out the tape measures, which are in that bag, measure the toe, and hopefully it's close enough to not die. All right, we're pretty much perfect right again. We're at 76 and 9 16 on this one, and we're at 76 and 5 8 on the back. So that's about as close as I can get it. I tried to scooch them a little more to the right, so hopefully the steering wheel will be a little straighter going down the road, and we're actually in the center of the box. But we'll see. I'm going to go tighten up the tie rods and throw in a new speedometer gear and hopefully not lose too much fluid. So I took out the 33 tooth yellow gear, and I put in the 34 tooth blue gear, and hopefully that makes our speedometer a little more accurate. I think I just have regular ATF in this one for some reason. I'm gonna need a hand pump now. I can't just put it in through the hole in the floor. How inconvenient. We got some uh, automatic transmission fluid, which is what I have in this transmission for some reason. That was the OE fluid in these, but uh, Usually I put a mixture of like Lucas and gear oil. It just leaks back out anyway. So I should probably bring some transmission fluid and a pump on my road trip so I can refill it periodically. You remember when we were on our first road trip and we were gonna go to like Yellowstone and all these other places and we hit the first mountain pass going into 
Montana. Yep, Lolo Pass. And the transmission started making horrible noises, and yep. we didn't occur to us to, I don't know, check the fluid uh -huh. until a couple days later after we'd altered our plans, found ourselves in South Dakota, and it started making really horrible grinding noises. Uh huh. And then we had someone else put fluid in it, and it was fine, and we could have just done that ourselves and gone to Yellowstone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I remember that too. That's all right. We made it back to Yellowstone eventually. Yeah. I think we even saw people get near bison when they're not supposed oh, to. Oh yeah, they that's a staple of the Yellowstone experience. People are not very smart. Well, that was only like two thirds of a quart, I think. Oh, actually it's like right up at the top. Alright, I'm gonna say that's good enough. Um, is there anything else I need to do? I was gonna do an oil change, but you know, it's like 6.30 again, or later. Are you talking to me? Or yep, I'm talking to you. You're here. You're part of the scene now. Oh, no. Yeah. I was going to do an oil change, but now it's late. I don't want to. Mm. I should have resealed this transmission when I took the engine out, but I didn't want to. So, it's still... Do you think going to come back and like it Um, it'll last. I think... I want food. Yeah, me too. All right, well, then we're done. We've done a bunch of little stuff on this one, and each one of those little things is gonna add up to, hopefully, a decent road trip car. What do you think, hot dog? The Fury gets the hot dog thumb of approval. Is there anything else we need to fix before going to Plymouth? No. Oh, really? Wait, yeah, the rear end. What's wrong with the rear end? Looks crappy or something. Do you mean the trunk? <laughs> yeah. What about the floor? Yeah, it looks really crappy. All right. So how about next time we fix the floor? This, this is a piece of crap. <laughs> Henry, you're the one that wants to drive this thing to Plymouth. Okay. Well... I'm sure there's more little things to fix, but uh, next time we're going to be tackling the last big project before it's ready, and that's replacing the floor pan. I'm going to have a floor here on Wednesday, so hopefully we're going to tackle that next weekend. Until then... Um... This bad boy can fit so much spaghetti. Th <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yeah, thanks for watching, by the way. Some rear end. <laughs> <laughs> You're cutting that.